Everybody's super concerned about whether we put the flag on the moon or not, but is anybody concerned about putting a Canadian in Neil Armstrong's role as the guy that put the flag on the moon? Mm-hmm. First man, spoiler review, right now on Miscast Entertainment. Movie review. Boat. Welcome back, you uh. miscast misfit <laughs> misfits, to another episode of Miscast Movie Reviews with your burpy ass host, JJ. <laughs> Mama Mia, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy with lots of hair on his face. Oh, my name's Craig. Is that your hair? No. Did you buy it's it? Makeup. Did you get it at the flea market? I did. <laughs> <laughs> and yours truly, William Davis Moore. And we're talking about First Man with Ryan Gosling and directed by this guy that did La La Land and Whiplash. All right, so. What do you think about it? I love the movie. You did not like the movie. You kind of liked the movie. We're done. I say watch the movie. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching. As (laughs) always, head on over to our channel. (laughs) Now, uh, seriously, uh, we had some discussions in the non-spoiler. If this is your first time here and you want to see the non-spoiler, please head over and watch the non-spoiler because in this episode... We are spoiling it. You know, one spoiling of spoiling history. One of the things that I found really interesting about that first trailer is that when, if you watch the trailer, there's this one part, and I think like a, a minute and fifty two seconds within the trailer, you see uh, Ryan Gosling's Neil Armstrong's house on fire, yeah. and the whole family's like outside and they're screaming, but it wasn't in the movie. Not a hint of that in the movie. High five! Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's, it's the beard rubber. Yeah. They make Buzz Aldrin look like such an asshole in this movie. Yeah. That was kind of thing. I met Buzz Aldrin when I was a little kid at some some event he was speaking at. So when I saw him kind of portrayed as like this guy that says really inappropriate stuff, you know, yeah, with that zero comment. filter, I was like, yeah, that's... Eh. I wonder what he thinks about it. But that. there was no remorse for him. There wasn't like a redeeming factor. They just made him look like an asshole and that's it. They never... They never came out of that. That no, and I was, there were several scenes where they did that too. A, a few of them, and I, I was like, "Well, now Neil Armstrong has a sp- how is Neil Armstrong going to spend all his time in that space capsule going to the moon with this guy who he clearly does not like?" Yeah, you know, well, or at least that way, the way they portrayed him. Don't forget that Buzz is the guy that punched that asshole filmmaker that that conspiracy well, that guy theory. deserved yes, a punch. Yes, yeah, yeah, he deserved it, but yeah. Buzz has obviously got a, a strange temper. I mean, to do what these guys do, you have to be on another level. Well, uh, uh, Buzz has always been a blunt. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's always had no filter, but I think they went maybe a little extreme yeah. in this movie. But. And one of the things I think the, the movie does well is shows you how, how the balls that these guys have. Yes. I mean, it, the, these characters, to me, like the real astronauts every single one of them have showed so much bravery because yeah. neil armstrong is kind of like cloaked in death like the movie begins with like his daughter dying right. and that kind of like propels him to like accept this job and then all these astronauts around him are dying right. even with like simple tests that don't even leave the earth a- the earth's atmosphere right. um and he's still like all these guys are still willing to go and and do things and see things that nobody else has ever done before. And to trust this rickety, shaky technology, you know, that, that NASA is giving them. But not only that, but, but America itself was like against the whole program. They, they they played that whole scene with like whiteys on the moon. Yeah. So like the, the whole nation was against us spending so much money to get on the moon yeah. when we have, you know, like we're like an impoverished nation yeah. or, or, you know, there's other people like, well, like suffering. Well, 69, so. Nam was going on. So. 69? Yeah. Right. Nam so was going on. It was in the middle of Vietnam. So. And Everybody uh, was protesting everything. Yeah, I mean, and you still see people like you know, there's that argument is being made now, which is why you don't see you see private firms like SpaceX doing spend yeah. more space exploration than NASA has been doing. It seems lately, yeah. so or at least that we're hearing about. Yeah, so that argument still goes on, but they did a good job of I think showing. But, but there was a really good moment when we finally did make it to the moon. Mm-hmm. And we started seeing that footage, those pictures back, yeah. and then you could see like the nation kind of coming together and cheering and 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 really pushing NASA. I think that was a really that that's a really important moment in, in our nation's history. Right, and it was and it was a very patriotic moment, and that was the one thing we 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 got to talk about was that the flag. everybody was all up in arms about them not showing the actual planting of the flag on the moon, but you do see the flag on the moon. Yeah, you, there, you there's plenty of flags all over the flags place. Flags 
everywhere. That's all they ever talk end. about. Yeah. <laughs> There's flags everywhere on there. And there was nothing more patriotic than these yeah. guys risking their lives and the well being of their families and all and all that kind of stuff to do something nobody's ever done before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a lot to say. I let you guys speak. Now I'm going to speak. Okay. Suckers. Here we go. Yeah. Preach. Here we go. Preach. Preach. As a cinematographer, um, I only had a few things that I, I uh, disliked about the movie. Tell us. Um, let me tell you what I liked about the movie. <coughs> um, my mother sends me a lot of pictures that she has from college, you know, when she was in the late 60s. Um, the grain and the color of those pictures I saw in this in this mm-hmm. film. Mm-hmm. I thought they portrayed that extremely well. They upped the grain of the movie. It was like the grain of the movie was the was you really a character. Right yeah, really a character in the movie. The handheld camera work, it was it brought you into like before steady cam and all that. I felt it was really authentic. And then the washed down uh, pastel light colors uh, was really nice. You know the 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 ambient lighting and stuff instead of like studio type lighting was it gave it a real authentic feel. I felt like. I was in the 60s. I was in that time. Really good. The the uh, the way that the sound was used. Um, it was incredible. I, I appreciated that in the beginning, before the first time that they were in space, that he didn't use any music really until they got to space. Then he used a soundtrack. Yes, right. yes. My my beef now, it, now I'm going to go into beef. The sound effects were great, obviously, but you already explained that. that. My beef with that was he didn't continue to use a soundtrack after that. Look, half of a movie is the music. When you take that away, you take the emotion of the scene away. So he used it well in the beginning by building up the emotion to the climactic soundtrack part. But by not continuing soundtrack after that, I felt like he, I, he just tore away all the emotion in the movie. When we went back into the, to the characters after that, to the family life and stuff where it got quiet again, I was bored. I was bored. Yeah. I didn't care anymore. I didn't care about his family life. I did. The close-ups should be used sp- sporadically. They should be used to highlight an emotional instance in someone, to, to build a character's presence on screen. When you use it constantly, and it's all you ever see is the close-up, 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 the close-up, the close-up, and it's extreme like that, then when the character actually has an extreme emotional moment, you can't highlight it because <coughs> otherwise you're going to be zoomed in on their center of their pupil and and you can't you can't do that so he he failed with those close-ups and it and it became irritating and it made it even more boring because now i can't get into he took the emotion away with the music and he took the emotion away with the close-ups so now i have no emotional connection to the characters anymore so when they finally blasted off into the final moon shot you know which was the highlight it was emotional that that went, and the music started again. Everything started. The music again was great. The soundtrack started, and I was into it again. It became a real movie again. Mm-hmm. But I was so there was so long of a time that I was sitting with the family stuff that I was bored, and I was just looking at my watch like, when is this movie going to be over? I didn't have the investment that I needed to have in the final aspects of the film because he wasted it with the drama that didn't even have any meaning in between uh, Gemini to Apollo. Gemini. Gemini. <laughs> as a Gemini, I'm offended by that. You're offended <laughs> yeah, as a yeah, Gemini. Yeah, fellow Gemini. Um, but that was my main beef. Uh, do I think it's Oscar worthy on the sound aspect parts? Yes. On everything else, no. Well, if I can jump in here, I think that um, I agree with you that the family drama stuff would really drag the movie down. I disagree with you about the movie uh, uh, about the music and the use of music I thought um, it wasn't until like the first time they went into space I was like wait a minute they haven't used any score up until now that I agree with and you. and I, I thought I was like oh, that's interesting but after that I felt like there was a lot of score and one of my notes was only in space uh, it was only in space dude I, okay, I was writing I, it down <laughs> I don't yeah okay okay um, and I most of the movie I, takes I, place I, outside I of space yeah, okay so but when he, they did, like you said, when they did finally, when that, when the music started playing, when they were making that landing on the moon, and when he finally said the eagle has landed, I was like, I got emotional. Yeah. Like I was like, I was like, oh man, why, why am I getting emotional right because now? Because it I became know a real movie. Happening. Because that's they started a soundtrack, and they, the yeah. the emotion of an actual cinematic experience began again. Okay, so when they did use the music, I thought it was very effective. Right. I thought I, I'm did, with I you. agree with you that the family yeah, stuff did you. drag the movie. Well, I, I want to talk about the family stuff because I'll tell you what, like as the parents, 
as a parent, sometimes you have to make decisions about your personal life right. and as your professional life that goes against, you know, um, it goes against family. It means if you want to have a professional life, sometimes you have to spend less time with your family mm -hmm. and you have to make that sacrifice. And I think that this movie did like a really good job of that. Okay. And if I can say, I, I, I agree with you. I just, maybe it could have been truncated a little bit. I mean, w one of the things that I found, the only fault that I have in the movie is that I wish it would have been, the whole movie has this sort of sense of like, um, it has a documentary sort of feel where it stays because of the close-ups, it stays really close to all the characters. Like, like the camera is physically close to all the characters. And I thought that, I, I kept thinking, would this movie be a little bit more effective if it concentrated more on Ryan Gosling's character and less on the family character? But keeping that in mind, the family character, it was always something in the back of his mind. It was always something that, yes, I want to accomplish these amazing things, but at what cost? at the cost of human lives and at the cost of my own soul, which is my wife and, and my kids. Mm -hmm. there, there's a really great scene where the wife tells him before he leaves to go to the moon, talk oh. to your kids, mm -hmm. talk to your sons, tell them, tell them that you may not ever come home again. Great use of close-ups. And close -ups. I thought that was like an amazing yeah. scene. Great use of close-ups. The director, I think, did a great job at kind of like keeping the whole thing kind of like consistent. But it, you would not see you would have had an even more emotional experience if they would have used the close-ups correctly. That's my point. Like the fact that they didn't means that you're pulling a scene out because that scene was charged emotionally by the actors and they did that on their own. Sure. The film work did not create that scene. The people did. Ryan no, Gosling. I disagree with, the I disagree woman, with that too. The, yeah. No way because it was it's the a same, combination of the two. It right. was the same exact extreme close-up that I had seen for an hour and a half before that scene even happened. So, like, wow. to say that that had anything to do with hyping up the emotion more than it already was is a fallacy. Oh, I disagree. Because the, the actors did their work and made that scene. She made that scene. Pat doesn't have a husband. Those kids, they don't have a father anymore. Do you understand what that means? I, so, I felt scene. something in that scene. Yeah, so, I felt, uh, I felt so the kinship I. to that scene. Sure. And so how is that a fault? How is that yeah. something done wrong, William? Hey, right. It's a fault in cinematography because it would have been even more powerful. I would not have a problem. I would even be more on board with you if they would have spent more time spending wider shots to show more encompassing situations and then used the closer shots to show what you're talking about. It would have been a more impactful scene. And if they would have even added we a little bit. That. We don't know that. We would have to see that. Yeah. And, well, I, and, and I, I, Watch it again, guys. If, you, if you're going to see it again, because this is a film that does you know, merit some multiple views. When, sure, I, yeah. when I was watching this movie, the close-ups, I, I didn't have a problem. I didn't even register the close-ups with me during the family stuff. I, it didn't even register with me. What I had a problem with the close-ups were that they were, uh, uh, when they were in space and stuff like that, and all it was was just hit like close up right here and the camera shaking, shaking, shaking. And that was, I felt that was overdone. It was during the space stuff where I was like, kind of like, oh, I wanna see wider stuff. The family stuff, I did a close up, didn't even register, but you're saying that the close ups bothered you. As a filmmaker myself, I had issue, but that's only my opinion, guys. You yeah. know, and obviously opinions are assholes. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, I, 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 I they really try to tr <laughs> so many so many close ups <laughs> yeah so, way um, too many not just close ups extreme close ups man there's a difference but what i really <laughs> what i really liked and at the end when they did the um when they did the lunar landing was uh so this was the first time that universal has used imax cameras in a movie and they used it to great effect showing the landscape of the moon and all that kind of stuff there um and i really also appreciated them using the uh actual audio from the real moon landing whenever he says the eagle has landed and then Houston responds that's real audio footage from that time yeah yeah and I well, thought that was really that was cool. really cool everything in the movie was pretty much spot on accurate except for that bracelet I the watched bracelet, the documentary right. what happened with that bracelet so he had his so for those that don't know <laughs> as he, far as I know his uh, daughter his daughter had a bracelet that he took with him to we see room. it several times in the movie yeah but okay. nobody including Neil Armstrong has any recollection of that ever actually happening yeah he so, says not so it probably didn't happen he the thing is probably didn't happen he was alone for uh, 11 minutes exploring what they call the East Crater right and so that's when his uh, apparently Neil Armstrong's sister says 
I like to think that he did, but. So really Neil Armstrong was alone for 11 minutes in the moon. Well, yeah. both of them, they went off and yeah. did their own two things. Right. Like he was supposed missions. to explore the See, crater. Can I ask you a question? Ser no, seriously. No, like no jokes. Do you think he in the, on the moon? He might have suffocated. No way. If you're going to be on the moon, that would be like the best place to like he, rub one out. No? Well, well you got to. You, you, it's, it's, a, it's a good claim to fame. Like, yeah. You know, whatever, first you know, man. Talk about, fir talk first, about first man. man. Yeah, but to shoot off um, in the moon. He's got two and a half hours. <laughs> Blast off. He's got two and a half hours of oxygen. As, as a diver, I know that if you breathe more than you're supposed to, you're going to decrease that time. So if he's got to keep up with Buzz, either Buzz is rubbing one off too, or. Uh, I think they both probably. They had to out. both do it at the same time. Well, that way, they can both be like. Well, listen to William bringing the science behind. No, this too. William's been underwater. William is actually an accomplished diver. So, if yeah. you guys don't know, William has been underwater in the ocean. He's seen like the bottom of the ocean. All right, <laughs> hey guys, as always, head on over to our channel if you're not already there, and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Then hit the bell next to it so you can get notified of all future content. Uh, we have tons of content, so check out some of our older content and some of our older reviews. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, <laughs> son of a motherless goat. I can't get through the end anymore. You guys are shooting webs at me, frying me with freaking wands. <laughs> Head on over to miscast.com and check that out because it's cool. Okay, All right, guys. Peace. <laughs> These motherfuckers. <laughs> Welcome back, you miscast misfit. <clears throat> Are we doing so? Is that the now we're doing misfits? No more misfits. Is it misfits? I, I or misfits? Up. No, no, okay. no, I traded it up. Right, okay, it includes everybody. Haven't right. you guys been reading any of the shit that I've been posting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, read misfits. everything. I read everything, I, William. I thought, you were, I thought we were permanently on misfits. I read everything you write, William. <laughs> I do, William. Just so you know. I know. I, I feel the love. I do. Welcome back, you misfits. <laughs> misfits. <laughs> wow.